Hi, I'll Lee Veris here, back from Venice Carnival with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Today I'm, I'm still on low light image recovery, uh, but this time with higher ISO images, and that means noise. I'm going to do a deep dive into a low light workflow that includes Lightroom's denoise enhancement along with some photo AI, some Topaz photo AI sharpening. And we'll talk about how the order of enhancements is very important for the quality of the end result. All right, let's uh, dig in here. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and I uh, have this concert shot here. Uh, this was taken at New World Tavern. It's a, a gastropub in, in Plymouth. Uh, and uh, these, these uh, People are friends of ours, and they're in the band Enough Said. Um, anyway, this is kind of typical of this kind of situation. It's a dark, uh, dark pub. Uh, the room is black with sound uh, absorbing uh, panels, and they're all wearing black. Everything is really dark, and that's giving us this really contrasty effect in the lighting. This is how uh, my wife, Bobby, uh, initially processed this. Uh, concentrating on, on getting good tones in the faces. It feels to me like we need to somehow reduce the contrast, open this up a little bit. There's a lot of toner mer tonal <laughs> merging going on here. We're losing our drummer back there. Um, and, and we can make this look better, but uh, it's going to involve a, a certain sequence of events so that we can av avoid the noise uh, buildup. So if we look at this now, the very darkest areas, you can kind of see that there's very little information. It's all black and there's a lot of noise. So if I want to open up the detail in the shadows more, you know, this is up at 100%, uh, I'm going to get more noise. And if I use more clarity and texture, I'm going to get more noise. So um, we, we're going to, first we're going to reduce the clarity and texture to zero. And I'm going to concentrate on just bringing up the detail in the shadows. Now, it seems like we can't really go any further because I've got the shadow slider up all the way. But here's the trick. We're going to first reduce the highlights because right now they're about right. The skin tone, the, the white guitar, they're right at that point where if I go any more, they're going to start clipping to white. And we don't want that, so we're going <laughs> to... We're going to make it darker by reducing the highlights. And I usually think about going about halfway down. I'll start there because that's really brought those highlights way down. And now I can open up the exposure and that's going to bring up the shadows. So I'll take this as far as I, I think I can. You can always go a little more on the highlights if you need to and open up a little bit more. We're starting to get a feeling for this the, the ambient environment now, but it's now the noise is really starting to pick up. Okay, and again, if I add any clarity, it's really going to amplify that noise. So here is the thing. I'm going to do my noise reduction before adding clarity or texture. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to take this into Lightroom's Enhanced Dialog where we pick up that denoise. So when we check that denoise, and I have the amount up here at, at 75, um, usually the default is like 50. Uh, and you can kind of see that it does a, a good job. There's still a little bit of noise left at 50%, so I'm going to go back and put it up at 75. This is always a matter of a trade-off. How smooth do you want it? And uh, or, or how, how much detail do you want to preserve? Sometimes preserving detail is going to preserve a little bit of noise. In this case, I'm just blanking it all out. I don't care. I want, I want that as smooth as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Enhance. And uh, Lightroom does its thing here. It's actually pretty amazing how good this ends up looking. We can see up there it's creating a DNG using the denoise. Uh, and in a moment... Uh, we'll see the, the finished denoised image. Okay, there you go. Boy, that really took out the noise without blurring uh, what was already there. And now we can think about adding clarity. 
a little clarity just to kind of snap things in, make that make it look a little sharper, even a little texture now. Now that we've removed the noise, the texture can't affect that noise. And you know, we're doing we're doing pretty good here. But it, I still feel like it needs some sharpening. Uh, everything's just a little bit sharp. It looks like the sharp, the focus was a little close focused here. It's probably up in here. This seems to be sharp and that's well in front of her. Uh, and so everybody else is just falling off. Let's see if we can make this look sharper using um, Topaz AI. So we're going to go in here. We're going to go into Edit In, and I'm going to go to uh, Topaz Photo AI. So what we want to do is edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments, uh, and we're going to go ahead and click on that, and it will launch uh, Photo AI for us preparing a file for editing and here we go and I'm going to go ahead and close this it always prefers to work with a raw file but then I have to re-render it in uh, photo AI and it's not worth the effort all I want to do now is sharpen so it's run it's sort of auto uh, autopilot detected uh, the subject detected four faces um, we're recovering faces usually when it says recovering faces what that means is it's it's kind of keeping it so that it doesn't get too textured. Um, so in, a sen in essence, recovering faces means it's kind of smoothing things. And, and maybe it does a little detail recovery. But all the action is really going to be in the sharpen section here. So the autopilot didn't decided that this wasn't didn't really need sharpening. Uh, it's removing a little more noise, which is kind of interesting because we you know, it's adding this minor D blur, so her face actually looks a little bit better. Minor, minor uh, noise reduction here. We'll leave that on. That's okay. Um, and it's the sharpen that I'm kind of interested in. So I'm going to turn the sharpen on, and we'll look at the parameters. Let's see. Uh, it's decided to pick the standard AI model for sharpening. And we can make this a little bit sharper. I can see already her face is looking a little bit sharper. Let's add some strength to this. Just add that up. And then we'll take a look at after it finishes processing it. It's still initializing. Now it's there's the preview. Okay. So it's gotten sharper everywhere. Even, even our drummer back here is looking a little sharper. And... Let's see, it's rebuilding again. The preview's update, and he's even looking a little sharper. Um, since she's sort of our front person here, let's make sure she's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe do a little bit more. And I'm, I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. All right, so... I'm going to ignore everything else because the main thing that I want to do is sharpen this. So now all I have to do is save to Adobe Lightroom Classic. I'll click on that button there and it will return me back to Lightroom with this new enhanced noise reduction uh, image selected for further editing. Okay, so there we are. Nice noiseless uh, all these details opened up. Now the last thing I'm going to do is is kind of further refine this. I'm looking at the uh, at the shadow values in here. I'm just moving my cursor around and looking underneath the histogram, and I can see in the darkest areas uh, we're a little low in the green. So that means it's kind of got a magenta cast. And if you look at this, it does look a little bit like it's got a magenta cast. Let's pull away from magenta in the uh, color temperature. I'll we'll push it towards green a little bit. And I want to make sure that my skin tones don't go too green. But it does, that did help a little bit. I'm still low. If you look in the numbers, I want those shadow values to be equal. And that will take out some of this feeling of, of a color cast, which is a little on the red side now. So maybe move a little more towards yellow a little a little more towards green I, again I don't want to make this too he's getting kind of orange looking 
Uh, and I want to make sure that she has, she's starting to get this feeling of green shadows. So that's not good. So let's move away. Just want you to get the idea of all the refinements that are, that you can make on this. I've got one more idea here to reduce some of that feeling of magenta in the shadows, which I'm double checking in my numbers up here. So 11, 4, 8, 9, 9, 3. So green is the lowest, red's the highest, and blue second. That means it's kind of on the magenta side, and this shadow should be way more neutral. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a luminance range mask. So I'll go over to my mask panel here, and I'm going to select luminance range, and I'm going to click on the darkest shadow that I can see, which seems to be in this area right there. And you can kind of see the red now is showing me all the shadow areas. And I'm just going to desaturate these. Let's see, that, that helped a bit. That's 18, 2, 15, 13, 1. It's still a little, a little reddish, magenta-ish. We'll just, in, we'll just increase the range of that desaturation. And now I'm getting, I'm getting much closer there. So I'm opening up the range. We can, sh we can uh, show the overlay. I'll show you what that's, what's doing. I'm opening up the range. Uh, am I going to get it into this area or not? I'm not sure. Let's see if I can do that without affecting the other parts of the image. I don't want to get the faces desaturated. So I'm just opening this up because those shadows being desaturated are, are kind of important. I want this to be as neutral looking as possible in the shadows. And now I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. So let's take the overlay away. And yeah, I'm much closer to neutral there. I'm, I'm pretty neutral everywhere else. Yeah, a little, just still a little bit on the red side. We can move our color temperature down here, also a little more towards the green, and that will that will help pull us away from red. So there you go, 11, 2, 11, 1, 11. This area is absolutely neutral, which is what we would expect for a shadow. And then just to finish it off, because my range has just identified the darkest elements there, I'm going to just push the black slider down, just pump in just a little bit more contrast in the darkest of the dark areas. All right. And now I think I'm, I'm pretty done. We've got a nice sharp image here. No real noise. I mean, I could get in there and kind of spot out all the little tiny spots that are left, but uh, I'm not going to bother doing that. This now is, has uh, turned into a much better image than it did when we, uh, when we first saw it. Let's take a look. Here's our original so our original image. And let me bring this back to where it was before we this is where we started and this is where we ended up. So I made considerable improvement, opened up, you can see the environment that they're, they're no longer merging into the background. Um, this has worked out real well. Okay, well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own post-processing work in Lightroom. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. I'll finish for now, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time on Phototech Tuesday. Bye for now.